How is it going, everybody? Luker back once again. And today we're going to be taking a look at the best decks for ladder in 2021, or January of 2021. It's a new year, new meta, the recently just nerfed Box by Knuckles to being three attack, and Edwin to being four mana. Our prayers have been answered. I genuinely cannot believe that they nerfed Edwin. It's actually insane to me. But I want to take you on a trip to talk about the five best decks. The balance patch happened yesterday at the time of recording this, so Friday. So the meta hasn't really shaped up too much. It's still kind of hard, you know, we're navigating a new meta. But I think I have a pretty good grasp on the meta. I'm in top 100 currently. I've been playing a couple decks, trying different things and seeing what works. And I want to help you guys out. If you do enjoy this video or find it helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All of them help me substantially. Every time you guys like the video, comment, or subscribe, it makes me very happy and it helps the channel grow. I'm going to be spending a lot of this year in 2021 putting a lot more work into this channel. In 2020, I kind of laid the groundwork, but in 2021, I want to be making several videos a week, putting my editor to work and treating her really, really well. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. But for real, guys, if you do enjoy the video, you guys know what to do. Um, videos three times a week, let's hope. Now, after you've done all that, let's jump in to the top five decks and take a look at number five on our list. So as usual, the way that we do things here is we start with the fifth deck, then go fourth, third, second, and we end with the best deck for ladder. Uh, if you want to skip around, there's going to be timestamps in the description and on the URL. You'll see it broken down to chapters. You can just click to find the one you want. I prefer if you watch the whole thing because it increases watch time, and I swear my mom tells me I'm funny sometimes. But hey, anyways, let's take a look at the first deck. So, number five on our list is a deck I've seen quite a bit in High Legend with Highlander Priest. Honestly, it could be a little bit higher maybe, but part of me refuses to put it higher. I think Priest is morally unacceptable. You know, you play Priest, you gotta go. You play these Highlander or Control variations of Priest, well, you gotta go, it is what it is. But the deck is pretty powerful right now. It's abusing the new meta. I think it still struggles to compete with some of the decks higher up on this list, but it has been seeing quite a bit of play. This is a pretty standard list that we're featuring right over over here. You can look at it has all the normal inclusions and just the standard cards. I believe that this is comics list. I'm sorry if I got it wrong, but regardless, you can find it in the description below along with all the other deck lists. Priest is pretty good. You can tech it accordingly if you feel like you're still seeing Shaman or maybe you're running into other weapon classes such as Agro Rogue or Bomb Warrior or even the ETC Warrior with uh, the Bulwark. You can put in Sticky Fingers and Swampoos. If you aren't seeing any of these and you haven't seen anything, you can replace them with more value generation or even more greedy threats if you're feeling greedy. I'm not going to harp too long on Priest because, well, I think I've had Priest in like every one of these videos, and there's only so much to say. Play your stuff on curve, remove the opponent's board, play big threats and kill them. They make a threat, steal it. They don't make a threat, hero power pass. If you have no minions to play, play spells. If you do have minions to play, play them. Anyways guys, let's jump into number four because I just, I want to stop talking about Priest, I'll be completely real with you, so let's take a look at the next deck on this list. Alright, now for the fourth deck. You'll notice my light has been turned on, and I probably look a bit tired. I got dragged into Among Us. I disappeared in the middle of recording, but we're back. Now the fourth deck is actually one that I think is maybe a little controversial. I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, are you sure? Are you sure? In fact, two of these decks might be a little bit controversial, but Evolved Shaman is coming in at number four. I know what you're saying, thinking. You're probably like, oh, Luker, it was nerfed. Yeah, the deck is still good. Just because you lowered the attack on the weapon from one at each rank doesn't mean I can't go Desert Hair Coin Revolve. It doesn't mean that on the turn after I equip the weapon, I can't have a big board. It does slow it down a bit. Not being able to play Dread Corsair it hurts the turn you play the weapon. It also hurts on your Mogu and Giant turn. It prevents you from playing a free minion to decrease the cost of the bigger dudes. But it's still a good deck. It's not seeing a lot of play in High Legend right now, but I strongly believe that is for two different reasons. One, there's this kind of like pseudo effect where people hate playing nerf decks. But two, people in High Legend are all playing Sticky Fingers and it kind of makes playing the deck a little bit miserable. I think it was immediately after the nerfs, I queued into Zay, Z-E-H, Z, -E Zay, I don't know. And he was like top 25 with Vol Shaman. I did win, but I also Sticky Fingered and oozed him that game, so it is what it is. I actually think this is a really good deck though. I think that the standard list is still good. This is Gabby's list from before the nerfs that you will be seeing <laughs> here. I think it's a good deck though. People will probably add you and flame you. If you Q Evolve Shaman the Ladder, you're gonna get Death Threats. The people are gonna wish illnesses on your mother. People are, it's gonna look like a League of Legends lobby. People are gonna be very toxic to you, so don't accept any friend requests unless you're very thick skinned, like me. For real though, Evolve Shaman's pretty good, guys, and I think it's definitely a good deck for you to take the ladder if you're looking to climb. The third deck on this list is OTK Demon Hunter. My mind always gets like confused when I'm doing the math, where it's like, this is the third deck on the list, but it comes, like, number three is easy because it's three and three, but like the fourth deck is the second one we're talking about, but it's the fourth best deck because I count backwards for some reason because I'm stupid and that's Canada. We're all dumb a little bit. I'm kidding, Canada. I love you. Anyways, OTK Demon Hunter is number three on this list. I'm 
I'm a little unsure of if this is actually number three or if it's four. I think it's kind of close. I think this deck takes a lot of skill to pilot, like an insane amount of skill. When I tried to play this deck, like you, you can play the deck without necessarily knowing how to play very well. Sometimes you'll draw hands that are very out autopilot. But I think if you want to play the deck well, it takes a lot of skill. You have to make sure to know when to use your abilities, such as Fell Screen Blast and I Beam to clear. You have to know when your win con is no longer OTKing and instead it's tempoing out your dudes, which is pretty rare. You have to know when you're playing for a Zeph into Tyrion, a Zeph into Doomhammer. There's a lot of little niche things that take a bit of time to learn. There are some hands that are autopilot, don't get me wrong, but I do think this deck takes a lot of skill. When I played it on stream, you can watch me, by the way, over at twitch.tv forward slash lucre underscore jess. Usually it's top 100 gameplay, and I make fun of a lot of people because I, uh, I'm, I'm quirky. Hee hee, rar xd. Anyways, when I played the deck, I was always confused. I was like, all right, I want to play Skull, but I have nine cards in hand, so I'm going to dump stuff. Oh, I don't have enough damage to kill my opponent. Fuck. It, there's a lot going on, and your brain expands as you play it. The deck's pretty good. There's a lot of different lists floating around. I think... Before the nurse, it was common to see Pole Kelt and Skull. Now people are cutting it and just running more like early cycles, such as Spectral Sight, the one mana spell that draws an outcast card, Double Jump, I think, something like that. Anyway, there's just a lot of different lists going around. The one I'm featuring here is played in High Legend. I think it's a pretty good list. Um, as the, the weeks go on, it might change a little bit. This is a desk that I would put a little like asterisk next to. Right now, I do think it's this good, but as lists are refined and the meta's refined, it might spike to number one. It might fall to number seven. I don't know. Who knows? If you want to know, you can watch my YouTube channel, you'll find out soon. Speaking of finding out, let's find out what deck is up next, guys. One day I promise you guys I'll learn how to do this YouTuber thing properly, where I transition smoothly and I have super high energy the entire time, but right now I cut my video up in parts and I'm papega as fuck, so I try my best. Anyway, number two, number four, the, the fourth deck we're looking at, number two on this list, the second best deck, is Tempo Rogue. I know what you're saying. Pretty much the exact same thing as you were probably thinking of Shaman, the archetype was nerfed. But the Edwin, Ar the Ar Edwin nerf sorry, wasn't as hefty as the Shaman nerf, and even the Shaman nerf still has the class being viable. The Edwin nerf, one mana is a big deal, three to four is a pretty big deal, but you can still play it on turn one with Foxy Frog Shadow Step, you can, and Coin. You can still play it in the mid game with some cheap spells such as Prep, Backstep, and Coin. It's still a threat, it's a big dude, and obviously a lot of decks aren't suited with dealing with Edwin on turn three. Turn four is... You know, it's a bit later, but it's still only one turn. A lot of decks can't kill a big Edwin. Tempo Rogue is a good list. You don't need to cut Edwin into one of. We can play a one of that was nerfed. And the rest of the class is still pretty good. I've been playing a lot of Bomb Warrior and Highlander Mage on the stream, which I mentioned before. And I lose to Rogue a decent amount. They play Edwin, I'll kill it. Coerce, whatever. They play Questing, I'll kill it. I'll play the qu kill the next Questing. Then they Jandis and Shadow Step it. Then Jandis again, and then Jandis again. And if I somehow made it this far, they play Hanar and I want to put... You know, you know, you know how it is. I think Tempo Rogue is actually a very good deck. I think people are a little hesitant to play it because of the nerfs, but I do think it's the class I've queued into the most recently. I think there's a world where Tempo Rogue still is the best deck. I don't really want to put it number one because of the like recency bias of it just being nerfed, and I like the number one deck a bit more. But I think there's a world where Tempo Rogue is the best deck in the game, and I wouldn't be surprised if in February after the mini set, if it's not too sh like if the mini set in the end of January isn't that eventful, it doesn't shake out the meta too much, I could see Tempo Rogue being good. In fact, if the mini set even gives Rogue like one playable card, Tempo Rogue's still gonna be good. I think in a couple weeks this might be the best deck. Maybe people find an answer, maybe we just run like double owl in every deck, I don't know. But for now, I think it's definitely a good choice. The lists are all pretty standard, the only choice that you have to make really is if you run Hanar or don't run Hanar. I know I mentioned it before, typically I think lists have strain away from Hanar and they run World Kick. This gives you more value, it lets you generate more cards, and in some way it lets you answer aggro better because of Brain Freeze. And I think it's just kind of what the standard has become. But if you are running into a lot of uh, control decks, I think Hanar might be better. World Kick does give you value to beat control, but Hanar gives you a lot of fucking annoying secrets and it makes it very hard to deal with. I think Tempo Rogue's good, but there is one deck I like a bit better. That was a better transition. Number one on this list, the last deck we're taking a look at is Bomb Warrior. <laughs> Kaboom. Boomba Warrior. You, you know what it is. It's you play wrench caliber, you hit your opponent in the face, you make very little decisions except one to use removal. It's beautiful. Downside, it loses to Sticky Fingers. Sticky Fingers is still, there's like this res residual effect where people are still playing Sticky Fingers because of Shaman, and there's like PTSD. If you come into a Highlander deck, they might Sticky Finger you and you're gonna be upset. But the deck is really good. I was playing on Ladder, I haven't played it in a very long time, and I was storming through. I had fallen a bit to like 150, I played it, I'm back at 80 now. The deck, and like the jumps are pretty small at the top, like 150 ranks, so it's pretty good. The deck wins. You play the weapon, you hit him, you put bombs in their deck. If you're not lucky, 
you might lose. They don't draw the bombs, but on average, they do draw the bombs, and you go, woo! And it gives you some hide moments. Your opponent might have two bombs in deck, and they're at 10 health, and they draw both, and you're just like, let's go! Let's go! And that feels good. Or your opponent has nine bombs in deck, and they don't draw one, and you punch your monitor like Summit, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, give and you take. I think Bomb Warrior is a very good deck. The list I'm featuring is the one I've been playing. I want to say, I'm going to credit it to myself, because I'm playing it right now. That's how Hearthstone works. I got it from someone else, like... Oh, quite a long time ago. I'm not sure who it was. If you do know, please give them credit. But for now, it's in the description. It's my deck. Or just, I guess, classic Bomb Warrior, standard Bomb Warrior. I do not really want to steal credit. The one thing I've noticed is people keep coming into my Twitch chat and asking me, why don't you run Dr. Krass enough? And quite literally, I just don't think you need it right now. They're, when the meta like evolves, it might be important. But like the mashups I'm playing against in Legend, I don't really feel the need for it. Against Shaman, Krass doesn't really do much. It's a 5 drop that kills something, but killing one thing isn't that good. Against Rogue, you play Krasadon into their Jandis turn. If you already have the weapon up and you draw perfectly, it's good. But it's a card in your deck that isn't as fast as some of the other cards. I'd rather just play Upgrade. I like having a clean list as well. Uh, one of the big things is when I play Galakrond, I don't want to draw Krasadon. I want to draw uh, Horde Pillagers most of the time. Or Krogs. So I think Krasadon could be good in certain metas. Right now, I don't really think you need it. Also against OTK Demon Hunter, it's not that good. Sometimes it's a body they can't really clear. But you aren't getting procs the turn you play it, so it's not that good. I'd rather be a bit more proactive. Anyways, let me guys... Let me know what you guys think about Bomb Warrior. I think it is pretty good. I've been seeing a lot of success with it, and I really hope I don't get sticky-fingered again. It's really upsetting. But yeah, that's what I think of the top five decks, guys, and I hope you agree to some extent. That wraps it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed the top five decks for January 2021. I'm just going to quickly go over them again. The decks are in the proper order, of course. I got you guys. Highlighter Priest, Evolve, Shaman, OTK, Demon Hunter, Tempo, Rogue, and Bomb Warrior. You can find all the codes in the description, as I mentioned below, and you can just kind of skip around if you want to listen to them on video and see the screen. Uh, if there's any deck that you guys want help with or you want to see gameplay of, please let me know in the comments below. I will upload a video. As I said earlier, excuse me, as I said earlier, I plan on doing about three videos a week if I can push myself to. It's hard for me to have the drive to do a lot of things, a little sad talk here. It can be hard for me to do that, but I'm going to try and push myself to have the drive to make the content three times a week. I really do appreciate your support, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It means the world to me. I really do mean it. Uh, yeah, once again, guys, thank you. 2020 was a wild year on Twitch and YouTube. The support I've received was insane, and I'm really happy with all of it, and I'm excited to give back to you guys and make more content this year. This is Luker, signing off. I love each and every one of you. Peace out, Cubs Guts. Have a good night, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.